Okay, we are continuing with the lesson. There was a problem with the camera, so we are continuing from where we ended. We were talking about the meaning of cooperative society, where we learned that when you say cooperative society, a group of people who have common objective come together for their mutual benefit. And we said it's a voluntary association. That means nobody forces you to join. It is open to every member of the community. Whoever wants to join can join. But remember, there is age limit. If you are not 18 years, you know, in Ghana, if you are not 18 years, you are still considered as a minor. When you learn law of contract, you learn about all those things. So you are a minor and you cannot join. Apart from that, if you, once you have capacity to join corporate society, as many people as want to join, you can join that uh, society. So that is for that one. So that is one definition. It's voluntary association. So we said corporate society is the voluntary association of persons who come together to pursue common objective for their mutual benefit and i've explained what is meant by mutual benefit each member of the society benefits it's not like the super proprietor where the super proprietor alone benefits from whatever comes out of the business if there is any surplus or if there's anything you know corporate society one thing one thing you need to know is that it's about the members welfare no matter the type of cooperative society you form, you establish it purposely to pursue common objective and it is paramount to members' welfare. They are not there for profit. They are, the, the purpose of the society is not to make profit. It is for the members' welfare. So, so whatever surplus or profit that will come out of it. The members will share. But it depends on the type of society that you have formed. So when you get to the types, you know all those things. So that is for the mean one of them. Then there is another way we can also define cooperative society. There's another way we can define cooperative society. What is it? Now, we have types of cooperative society. We will come there. But there is a definition that incorporates the types of cooperative society. So if you look at that definition, you see that you see the types of cooperative society in that one. And that is the one that is uh, here. So it also says that it's a type of organization. So that is the first thing. We know that it is a type of organization. Cooperative society is a type of organization. Now, when we say it's a type of organization, we know what organization is. Where people who have common interest, so here we said common objective, and we are seeing common interest, the two are the same. You, you pursue that common objective you pursue that common interest. So people who have common interests come together. Contribute capital. So they come together to contribute capital. That is number one. To undertake production. So when they contribute their capital, the capital is meant to undertake production. That is for some of them. That is why when I say, we came here, we said we have types of cooperative society. So you see, we have producers' cooperative society. So if it does the type, then it is captured in this definition. It is captured in this, this definition. So they, they contributed capital to undertake production. So then that will be producers' cooperative society. So that is one side. If that is not the case, to distribute. So some of them, when they produce, then they will sell whatever they produce. And so we can have what we call the marketing cooperative society. That's why I will talk about thread. Because the 
Producers Cooperative Society, when they produce, they sell. And that will be the marketing aspect uh, of it. So to distribute. So some of the cooperative societies, that's what they do. Then or to consume. So when you come here, we have consumers cooperative society. Consumers cooperative society. So it has been captured in the definition to consume. And when you get it, you know what they are consuming. So to consume for the purpose. So what is the reason? What is the reason? For the purpose, the production, the consumption, whatever. For for what reason? So for the purpose of maintaining the welfare. Remember, I have told you that corporate society is about members' welfare. It's about members' prosperity. So for the welfare of its members. So that is another way we can also define cooperative society. A group of people will come together. It's, it's, it is still a voluntary organization. So a group of people will come together. They contribute capital. And this capital, they have contributed. Some of them, they produce, so we call them producers cooperative society. Some of them, they establish shops and the members go there to buy goods from that shop. But you see, so you say, ah, but they can also buy the goods from any other shop. You see, we said it is for the welfare, for the welfare of the members. So what do they do? When you go there to buy the goods, you buy the goods at relatively lower prices. That means when you compare the prices that they, they will charge you there in the society. If you are a member, if you are a member, so it is, if you are a member, then you pay less than you would have purchase or bought somewhere. So, and that would be the consumer's cooperative uh, society. So that is what the, another way you can also define cooperative uh, society. Then, you remember I told you about the cooperative act. And this is the cooperative act. We call it the cooperative society act 1968. That tells us the year it was enacted. In other words, the year it was made. So 1968. And here, look at it. They have written NLCD 252. That means, you see, the previous ones we learned, you see, Act 151, Act 992, and so on. But here, they have written, they didn't write Act, they wrote NLCD. Two five two. What does that mean? This is the mean. This is the full words for the NLCD, National Liberation Council Decree. National Liberation Council Decree. You know, our first president was Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, and his government was overthrown by. Uh, through coup d'etat. So it was toppled by coup d'etat. So Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown in 1966. So those who overthrew Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, that is the name they gave to themselves. So they call them National Liberation Council. But you see, we can have democratic rule. Then we can also have military rule. When you have democratic rule, there is parliament. So today, now we have uh, we are in our fourth republic. So we are we are in the uh, democratic rule where we elect president. That's why Nana Ekufuado is now the president. There was somebody, and now when he also ends his term, he also goes. Other person will come. Other parties will come. So long as we continue to vote, then what it means is that there will be parliament. When they make laws, they call it act. But when they, uh, they are overthrown by the military or joint effort between the military and then the police, as it happened during the Nkrumah's time, then, because for them, there will never be any parliament. Today, if you wake up and tomorrow and they tell you that 
the NPP government has been overthrown by the military or whatever it might be, they will, the first thing they will do is to dissolve parliament. So if your father is a parliamentarian, he will come back home. There will never be parliament. They will constitute their own. Then they also make laws. When they make laws, they don't call their laws act. They call their laws decree. Decree. It's decree. Please, so note this. Uh, I was going over your book. I saw degree in your book. It is not degree. It's, it was typographical error. So it is not It is not degree. So please go back to your note and make that change. It is not de degree. It is decree. So when uh, the military or uh, make laws, when they overthrow government, they make laws. They don't say act, so they say decree. So it was during that time when Dr. Kwame Nkrumah had been overthrown and then the military had taken over. Then they made laws. So they have 200 and 52nd, the 252nd law was the one they called a National Liberation Council Decree. So it means that law was made by the National Liberation Council that overthrew Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. So that is what you need to know. So they established the Cooperative Societies Act, 1968. They overthrew Dr. Kwame Nkrumah in 1966. You learned this one in JHS 24th, something, something, you know, 1966. And then uh, they made laws. So one of the laws that they made was the Cooperative Societies Act, 1963. NLCD, they didn't say act. National Liberation Council Decree 252. So that is that. And this one had 70 sessions. Remember when we were talking about companies or patterns, we said the Bible is made in chapters and verses. When they make laws, they also make it in sessions so that you can make reference. Session 1, so session 2. So if when you violate any of their law, they say, according to session, so, so, and so, and so, and so, it has been divided into session. So when you go to the Corporate Society Act of 1968, Act, uh, and uh, Decree 252, it is made up of 70 sessions. And I've written some uh, of the sessions here. If you look at session 2, for example, session 2 talks about registrable society. What society can you register as cooperative society? Then they said, subject to this act, so this is the act, subject to this act, a society which has as its object, that means its objective, its object means its objective, the promotion of the economic interest of its members, economic interest of its members. So, if you want to promote the economic interests of your members, then you can register that organization as cooperative society under the Act. That's what it says, subject to this Act, under the Act. So that is why, if you look at it, we talk about two definitions here. If you look at this one, then we can also look at a third definition here. So it says, Cooperative society is an organization that is formed by a group of people whose primary objective, so you see, look at this one, come, uh, uh, economic objective, so promotion of the economic objective of its members, so whose primary objective, whose primary objective is the promotion of the economic interest of its members. So if you look at session two, you can define 
cooperative society as this. So once you want to promote the economic interest of a group of people, then you form, you, you come together to form cooperative society. So that is for session two. Then we have session uh, three here. Session three here. Session three is here. Session three talks about conditions of registration. So when you open the Cooperative Societies Act 1962, NLCD 252, Section 3 talks about conditions of registration. And it is also divided in subsections. So, you know, it's like if it were to be a Bible, chapter, then the verse, chapter, verse. So the session will be the chapter, then the, the, the subsection will be the verse. So it is session three. When you go to subsection one, it talks about minimum number of persons to form cooperative society. And it says that you should be at least 10 people. So that is what the act is, 10 people. Partnership two, minimum, maximum 20. Here they said minimum 10. So that is for session one. When you go to session three and session four, session three and session four, this is what it talks about how the name of cooperative society is formed. So session three talks about the word cooperative shall form part of every cooperative society. So once you form cooperative society, they say that you have to add the word cooperative. So cooperative distillers association, you know, cooperative, so there's cooperative inside, cooperative distillers association. Cooperative, so, 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 cooperative. So that is that. Then the session four says the word limited shall be the last word in the name of every registered society with limited liability. Now, the concept of limited liability is known to you. Remember, we said the super proprietor has unlimited liability, partnership has unlimited liability, unless it is limited partnership where some members have limited liability and others have unlimited liability we learned that in companies especially those that are limited by shares they have limited liability and we have learned about the meaning of limited liability that means the extent of payment of your debt does not go beyond your investment you will not use your personal belongings to pay for debt is the company, if it is a company, you pay your debt according to whatever you have contributed. If you have not paid all for the chase you subscribe, then you'll be called upon to just pay the unpaid part. We have learned about all these, these things, so I'm just giving you an um, uh, overview of it. So it says that if it is a limited Usually, corporate societies are, they have limited liability. But when you go to the Act, it, 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 if you want to form a corporate society that has unlimited liability, there's a room for that. So that's what they say. The word limited shall be the last word in the name of every registered society with limited liability. So if you have limited liability, then the, the, you also end with the word limited. So that is for that one. Now let's come to features of cooperative society. We know what features mean. When you say features, remember when we were talking about features of partnership, I brought a boy and a girl in a class and then we, we looked at the, their physical characteristics that make them different. So what makes a boy a boy and what makes a girl a girl? We, you mentioned them and then we saw that those physical characteristics, which are the features that will distinguish a boy from a girl. So when you see a boy, you say, oh, this is a boy. When you see a girl, you say, this is a girl. So uh, if you see, so uh, then we narrowed it down to the forms of business organizations. Features of super proprietorship. How do you see a business, you know, this is super proprietorship. Features of partnership. How do you see a business, you know, this is partnership. Features of social and social company. How do you see it, you know? Now we have come to cooperative society. So features of cooperative society. Very simple, straightforward features. The first one is that there is open membership. When we come here, we said it is voluntary association. 
So it, there's open membership. Nobody forces anybody to join. It is open to everybody. But you remember I have said you should be 18. Once you are 18, you can join. So open membership. Every member of the community can, can join. So it is open to everybody. If you want to leave too, you can leave. So there is open membership. Number two, it has limited liability. And we all know what is meant by limited liability. So we are not going to waste time on the concept of limited liability. That means that in cooperative society, members do not also use their personal belongings to pay for the debt. Whatever you have invested, that is what you will lose in the event of uh, liquidation. You lose only what you have invested. So we have talked about that. Then the third one is that there is democratic principle. Mm -hmm. Democracy. You know, democracy is all about uh, you, uh, you have a say, have my say. And we have equal say. So in cooperative society, they have equal say. Cooperative society is also buy, the members will buy shares. You buy shares to become a member. So they issue shares. Remember I said they issue shares. I didn't say they float shares. We have distinguished between floating shares, which is exclusive to public limited liability companies. We even say private companies, they don't float shares, they issue shares. So there's a distinction between issuing shares and then floating shares. So corporate society, they also they issue shares. So if you, are you buy shares to become a member of, of that one. The moment you do that, it doesn't matter the number of shares you have bought. You might have bought 1,000 shares. Another person bought uh, 100 shares. You all have equal say. One vote. When, if you are voting on any issue, if you have 1,000 shares, you have one vote. I also have one vote. So that is for what is meant by demo, there's democratic principle. That's what I've written here. One member, one vote. The next principle is principle of mutual health and welfare. So maybe it is established, if you look at the definition of cooperative society, it is for their mutual benefit. So uh, they help one another, depending on the type. Remember, if you are, it is the consumer cooperative society, you go and buy things at a reasonable price. If it is a producer cooperative society, do you, if it is the farm, the farm, uh, the farming one, let's say citrus farming. After planting the oranges and everything, you alone may not have the resources to cut the oranges from the farm to the market. So people may have to come there; they buy at cheap or lowest price. They come, they buy. 100 of them at a small amount. The 100, when the person goes, the person says only 10 and he gets the whatever. 90 will be the person's profit. They don't want that one. And you, the farmer, you get something small. So they come together, they can have the resources, they can have cars and whatever. So you have your individual farm. I have my individual farm. We sell our produce to the society. So I will sell my orange to the society, they will buy. Then you also sell yours. So so, so will sell there. Everybody sells theirs to the society. Then the, the society has the rest of God. You see, we have come together. So we have what it takes to take the oranges to the market. What has happened? We have eliminated the middlemen. The wholesaler who would have come to the farm with his own car to buy in larger quantity at a cheaper price. Uh, uh, one for let's say, uh, let's say uh, 10 pesos, then they will go by the time it gets to the market, one is being sold for let's say 50 pesos or one CD. Look at the difference. So they eliminate this middleman, and then the profit that the middleman would have made, they will now go to the market and sell to the retailers there themselves. So the profit that the wholesaler would have made will come to them, and then they will share that one. So you see. It is for uh, the principle of mutual help and welfare is working. If it, if it is the credit and thrift cooperative society, which we also call credit union,
You know, the banks are there. If you want loan, you go to your bank for loan. But they charge high interest rate. High interest rate. So these credit unions, which we call credit and threat cooperative society, they are there. If you remember, you save there. What, what happens? If you need loan, you go. The interest you pay will be relatively, the moment I say relatively, it means we are comparing with the bank, will be relatively lower than what you would have paid if you had gone to the commercial uh, banks. So that is principle of mutual help and welfare is working. The next one is that it is a legal entity. That is its legal status. It is a legal entity. We have we learned that on that company. That means once you form cooperative society, just as we learned at that company, it becomes a separate body from its members. And the society can seal and be sealed in its own name. So the members are separated from the society. So that one too is there. The management, who manages corporate society? They have what they call management committee. So it is managed by management committee. Partnership, you know, super partner who manage his own business. In partnership, you know that those partners, the general partners, will manage the business. If it is ordinary partnership where all of them have unlimited liability, then each one of them can, will be a member of the management team. In cooperative society, they form what they call management committee. It's a committee. So a group of people will be selected among them, whether elected or whatever, among them then they will manage the society. Then they will choose their chairman. So the chairman will be the boss at their meetings, whatever. The chair, he chairs the affairs, he leads them. So the chairman will be the leader among them. So it is managed by management committee. Then the next one is that surpluses are shared according to patronage. So, if you come to, let's say, consumer corporate, when I say surpluses, I mean profit. Remember, the aim of cooperative society is not to make profit. They are not there to make profit. But you see, if, for example, consumer cooperative society, that we said members will establish shops, and then you go there as a member to buy, and then you pay a relatively lower price. It doesn't mean that they will sell and make losses. If they bought something at, let's say, 10 cities, and you go somewhere, you are supposed to have bought it at, let's say, 15 cities, you go to the shop, you may buy at, let's say, 12 Ghana cities. So they will still make profit. At the end of the year, when they are sharing their profit, they will share it according to a member's patronage. Whatever you buy from the society will be recorded. At the end of the year, whatever profit uh, that dividend that you dividend that you get because it's like you have invested is in shares so whatever profit that you get will depend on the what, how much you bought from the society so according to patronage according to patronage in the same way the same thing so profits are shared or surpluses are shared according to patronage so that is that then the last feature here is that they can issue shares to raise capital. So take note. I said that's why I have underlined issue double. I didn't say float. So they don't advertise for the sales of their shares in the newspapers. They, they can issue shares. Remember, private company, we said if you want to. If you are a private company, you can advertise. You make personal contacts. So that is for that one. So that is for the features of cooperative uh, society.